Part 3. There's a group in our culture that doesn't fit in socially and therefore faces discrimination. It is good for young adults to think about this through their reading. In Jamie Adolph's Names Will Never Hurt Me, the main characters in this story, and there are four of them, all face isolation for one reason or another. In this story, it's the one year anniversary of a school shooting which left one student dead. With the news media on hand, things are a bit tense in the high school. Everybody's wondering if kids will make it through the day without breaking down or another serious incident occurring. Enter four high school students, Ryan, a jock with a secret, Floater, the school snitch with a motive, Tisha, a young biracial student who just wants to belong, and Kurt, the boy they call Freak. He just wants the bullying to stop, and he's about to crack. On this one fateful day, the paths of all these students will cross in a most unexpected way. Can tragedy be averted, or will history repeat itself? In this story, students get a real glimpse of what it's like to be treated differently, to feel like an outsider, and to be bullied. One of the most moving multicultural books I've read in the last year or so would have to be The Arrival by Sean Tan. It is a beautiful story told entirely in pictures, absolutely no words. Um, the story is of an immigrant's journey to a new land. He goes to the new land in the hopes of making a better life for him and his family. The man, who is never named, leaves his wife and daughter and heads across the sea looking for work in the big city. Sean Tan does a fantastic job of illustrating the emotional journey of a man such as this one, one who faces fear, isolation, and loneliness. One of the biggest current movements in a young adult literature, particularly in the area of multicultural literature, is to serve a very underserved population, and that is the gay, lesbian, transgender population um, in our community. And right now, not only are they underserved, but they're also misunderstood. And it is hoped that through literature, very well portrayed literature, that students will gain a better understanding and a sensitivity towards students in this particular group. The first one is primarily for high school students. It's called Seven Days at the Hot Corner by Terry Truman. Recently published, this book has been um, very well reviewed and very well acclaimed. The story is about um, Scott. He is on the varsity baseball team and he's having the best year of his life. His baseball team is undefeated. They're headed for a championship and then his whole life falls apart. You see, in the middle of one of their biggest tournament, his best friend Travis reveals to him that he is gay. And this sort of unravels Scott on many levels. To begin with, he kind of starts by getting a little hysterical. He remembers a time during the season where there was an accident and he came in contact with some of Travis's blood and that sends him straight to the doctor for an HIV test. So that creates some tension. There's tension at school when an, um, Travis gives an, an interview, an anonymous interview, and Scott starts to fear for his life. In the meantime, throughout this whole story, Travis gets kicked out of his house by his parents and Scott's dad um, allows Travis to come and live at their house which creates even more tension for the boys. But throughout the story, Scott really does develop a certain sensitivity, a really nice sensitivity for everything that Travis has been through. And I think it's a good story for students to develop that same sort of sensitivity. Although you might not guess from the title, one of those hideous books where the mother dies by Sonia Sones, this next story is actually a little less serious. In this story, um, Ruby, the main character, finds herself in a very difficult situation. Her mother has recently died, and this forces her to go and live with a father that she's never really known. Trouble is, everyone knows her father. He's Whip Logan, the renowned Hollywood actor, and he left her mother before she was born. He's not really had any contact with Ruby at all recently, not much since he left, and Ruby really hates him for that. So she's really horrified. Um, she goes to Los Angeles. She finds her father to be a lot nicer guy than she expected him to be. But she's not going to let him know that because she's still very angry with him. So Ruby heads to Los Angeles and she is trying to start a new life in a new school where the kids are not at all like the kids that she left behind. 
Her boyfriend is back east. Her best friend is back east. And of course, her mother is um, back east, buried there. And the whole story is really just about Ruby's adjustment, Ruby's discovery of uh, what it is that caused her dad to leave. And um, it's really a nice story. It's told in poetry prose. There's some really funny parts, even though the actual premise is, is not so funny. Um, the main character in this story is Ruby. She is not um, a, a teenager that is a gay or lesbian or transgender uh, student. However, there is a background character um, that, that plays a role in the story, a significant role in the story that, that fits that um, character. Probably one of the most undeveloped areas of multicultural literature for young adults is in the area of books that help students celebrate the elderly. I think that a lot of middle and high school students have um, a sort of love-hate relationship with elderly. Some of them are actually afraid of the elderly. So I think if they would be given good examples of kids having positive relationships with um, elderly people, that that could have a positive impact on them as well. Appropriate for middle and high school, Hit the Road by Caroline Cooney is a delightful story that shows positive interaction between a teenage girl and some elderly women, including her grandmother. Can you say road trip? Well, this is a story about a road trip, but not your typical road trip. You see, Britt turned 16 just 11 days ago, and her parents dropped her off to stay with grandmother for a few weeks. Britt's not happy to be there. Then on top of that, when she gets there, it becomes apparent that Britt's grandmother needs her help. You see, she and her three college roommates want to attend the, their 65th and probably last class reunion in another state, and they expect Britt to be their chauffeur. What Grandma doesn't tell Britt is that um, they've all been told they can't go. And so basically, Britt is running around um, the state kidnapping old ladies. It's a hilarious story. It's a story where Britt starts out kind of annoyed with everything that's going on and really starts to develop an understanding and a sensitivity um, of what it would be like to be elderly and not feel like you have control of your life. Um, I think it's a great story for for kids to read. It's got some funny parts um, and, as I said, appropriate for either middle or high school. The last book I'm going to talk about is called The Big Game of Everything by Chris Lynch. Now, normally Chris Lynch writes for high school students, but honestly, I don't remember anything objectionable in this story that would keep you from using it with middle school students, although I'm not sure they would in, um, understand all the humor in the story. In this story, the main character is Jock and Egon, and you'll have to read to find out where they got their names. They're two brothers that are polar opposites, and they bicker all the time. Um, they are spending the summer working with their grandfather at his golf complex. Um, Grandpa has, and they call him Grampus, he has a golf course because he invented this great um, tool a number of years ago. And when his wife, Grammas, left him, he um, had too much time on his hands and too much money, and so he buys this golf course. The problem is it only has... Uh, 13 or 14 holes, I can't remember. So you have to replay holes in order to get to your 18. But no matter what, Jock and Egon believe that Grampus has the best life of all, and they really idolize him. Um, one of the things that they idolize him for is that they view him as rich and happy, and this is such a contrast as to how they view their parents. Their parents are just happy. They're not rich, and they don't want to be rich. They work in a barber shop, and they actually try to talk people out of getting their hair cut. And so they view Grandpa as understanding the value of a dollar while their parents do not. And they obviously want to be more like Grandpa's than they want to be like their parents. As the summer unfolds, things start to change a little bit. A couple of Grandpa's old buddies show up, and Grandma's, his ex-wife, shows up at the golf course as well. And when he does, they, he starts to notice this competition between Grandpa's and his old friends. And um, come to find out, they are playing the big game of everything. And the big game of everything is really what it sounds like. It's who can have the most stuff. And it, and it sort of becomes obvious to Jacques um, very early on that, that there are people that will stop at nothing to win the big game of everything. And he's not sure whether he really thinks that's a good idea or not. And he's not sure whether his brother Egon is on the right track either. Um, the story is one of self-discovery, it's one of understanding, and um, they both come out um, with perspectives, though because they're polar opposites, their perspectives 
um, even in the end, turned out to be quite different.